Hello, my name is Myrna Clayton, and I am founder and executive director of Showability, formerly Able2. You guys, thanks so much for coming. Um, we're expecting a few more to join us, but hey, it's about being on time and being ready to go, and so that's what we are. And so I'm excited that you're here. Just to tell you a little bit about um, Showability, um, um, first, we are an inclusive art services organization that is for all abilities, especially people with visible and invisible disabilities. Um, we are all about creating music and artistic programs um, that promote um, talent, excellent talent. And so um, it's all about employment, it's about uh, education, it's about uh, empowerment, and it's about enjoyment. You guys, this is our eighth virtual um, masterclass. Uh, we actually did a pivot um, in uh, 2020 um, because we were uh, probably like most people um, we were doing in-person events and so we did a pivot so that we could connect with those who are homebound better connect with those who are homebound and those working remotely and so we're excited about this this is september 2021 and we are excited to be here so thank you so very much for being here and um we are um um we've got a full full day and so i'm going to take a moment just to kind of shift it over so that just in case there's some questions about tech i'm going to introduce our guru gary um who's going to come on board right now and just kind of uh help um alleviate any concerns or fears about um, being on Zoom, just in case this is your first time. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm so happy to be here with you. Uh, like Myrna said, I'm going to try to help out with uh, any tech issues you have behind the scenes. I'm going to watch the chat. So if you have any issues, um, you can raise your hand, you can put it in the chat, and I'll try to help you out um, as to not disturb the class. Also, if you have some background noise going on, darks, barking, or loud TV or something like that, uh, try to keep you uh, keep yourself on mute. Uh, this is going to be an interactive class, so you are going to be able to talk and all this stuff. But if you have noise going on in the background, just kind of mute yourself. And also, we may do some breakout rooms. We don't know. Um, if that happens, um, just follow the prompts on your screen. And if you happen to kick yourself out of the room or something happens, uh, I'll, I will let you right back in. So don't worry about it. Don't stress out. We'll get you right back in. Thank you, Gary. You guys, we are in for a treat. And I'm going to ask you, go ahead and ask you in advance to please, if you don't mind, allow us to see your lovely faces um, so that we can make this even that much more interactive. Right now, we just see names and, and images, um, you know, and so um, if you could, wouldn't, if you don't mind uh, bringing yourself on camera, that would be awesome uh, to support us. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, and let me just introduce someone who's very special to us and special to me. Um, Elizabeth Lab Webb is our instructor, our, our, our um, aficionado, our expert um, in, um, in acting. And, um, you know, you guys, some of you may or may not know that Showability um, has recently um, started a booking agency. Um, um, and that's been because we've been contacted by casting agents looking for actors, uh, um, authentic actors. And so one of the biggest things that the feedback that they've given to us is, you know, acting classes and things like that. And so um, I had sort of reached out to Elizabeth and Elizabeth, um, let me just, before I go into all of that, let me first just kind of give her her props because Elizabeth is right now executive director for Core Dance um, Company at Core Dance Studios, Indicator. And um, in addition to that, you guys, let me boast because um, Elizabeth has been um, on the radar for all things art um, in Atlanta. Um, she's recognized as an industry leader. Um, she's an alumni of the Metro Atlanta Arts Fund Arts Leaders. Um, she's also um, has her master her her, in, her business administration degree in theater arts from Kent State, and she has an MBA from the Ohio State University, and and um and so she's just she's well skilled and well trained. In addition, she's an award winning theater director, and um we're excited because she's an acting coach, and so she's got lots of things to share. Um, more precious to me is that she's been a long time advisor for me in the space in the space of arts and disability. Um, you guys, she has been on both sides of the table. She has hired actors 
and she's also been seeking to be hired uh, for acting opportunities. So she's been on both sides of the table. Um, she also knows the ins and outs, and you guys, she's probably heard every reason for and against hiring persons on the disability spectrum. And so no matter what questions you may have, I'm certain she has answers. And so without further ado, you guys, here's Elizabeth Lab Webb. You guys, woo woo, yay. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my God, I don't know how to follow that. Um, actually, I would, I'd like to see everyone's faces. What's really important about acting is that you are in the space with your whole self. That means you are face two. So Dana, if you're comfortable, Carolyn, if you're comfortable, that would be fabulous. Okay, that's okay. You know, some people are just not comfortable with showing themselves off. I know because believe it or not, I'm an introvert. So, okay, let's start out with a little bit about what I hope we can accomplish today. Um, this is acting 101 as quickly as I possibly can give it to you <laughs> um, because the hope is that you will join us again after this, uh, this online version for a live version um, at the Core Dance Studios where you get to see all of me just like I wanna see all of you. So today what we're going to do is we're going to uh, begin with a very simple way to introduce yourself to the group. We're gonna talk a little bit about how to give feedback when you're in one of my classrooms, okay? We're going to present some work that I hope you all have prepared for us. And we're going to use the process of feedback that I've given you to give each other feedback. And then we're going to wrap the whole thing up with what I call what's burning. What do you still need to know? What did you get out of the day? How profoundly were you changed? And I'm not changed at all, Elizabeth is fine. By the way, it's Elizabeth Labe Webb. Most people just call me Elizabeth because my last name is a bit much and my pre pre pronouns are she, her, and hers. So let's start with introductions. Myrna and Maya and Gary, do you guys mind if you guys play along? Will sure, that... of course. Okay, okay. Um, introductions. One particular way to do introductions so that we don't get you know, bogged down with, oh my God, what do I say about this wonderful and full life that I've had, is we use uh, something we like to call best. We want, what does your body feel like in this moment? Because an actor, their instrument is their body. How is your energy level today? What's your space like? Are you cluttered? Are you free? Are you sitting outside? Are you, you know, cuddled into a little ball on the sofa under your best quilt? That's great. And what's your time like today? And is it crowded? Is it open? Is it typical Sunday and you're dreading tomorrow? So best body, energy, space, and time. I'll start. My body's a little bit stiff this morning. I think it's still shaking off the rain that we've had. My energy is what a lot of us call performance energy. You go one, two, three, and you're up. Okay. Uh, space. Space is my living room. I'm surrounded by pets. And I'm looking out on one of my favorite views, which is out onto my own front yard, which is bright, shine, sunshiny, and covered in flowers. Time. Time. It is 420. It is in the afternoon on Sunday. And I feel just a little bit squished because I got a lot I want to get done before we finish today. So next part is you call on somebody to take over. Myrna, body, energy, space, and time. You're muted. Body, energy, space, time. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm Myrna and um, body... I am relaxed. I had a week of respite. So I am gearing back up into 
into into energy level which is what's what's next um, I'm pretty high energy anyway and so um, I am very much so gearing back up into into the flow of things um, space I am um, in my office with my since I don't have a green screen my full back um, and so I'm cool with that and then time um, um, it's 420 421 and um, it's time to get going <laughs> I'm going to pass it to Dana. Mute Dana, unmute Dana. Okay. I'm Dana Jones, best known as Miss Dana Kane. And what's that, body? I'm more of a, I'm an energetic person. I'm very, I'm very, I'm outgoing. But I'm an introvert too. I'm both. I'm, I guess that's what you call that. Extrovert and um, and space. I, I am in the bathroom. I'm going to take a shower. But when I heard about this class, I just, wherever and whenever I'm ready, <laughs> even if it's in the shower. <laughs> So I'm sitting on the bench in the shower right now. But um shower, my my daughter like, oh my god, did she just say that? But yeah, I just say that. <laughs> but um in time, I really don't know what time it is. I just know it's time to get started with this class. I'm I'm ready for the class. And I throw it to um, I don't even know the name. Don't see nobody's name. But the one with the braids that she had brown hair. Maya. And, and Me? glasses. Me, okay. Yes. <laughs> um, all right, okay. Maya, that is my name. Um, I I guess you said I said uh um body spirit well body energy space and time um body wise i'm feeling really relaxed uh, i had a really good peaceful uh start to my day um and my energy is very much so in a good space because i'm really excited to see what i can learn from this experience but also really grateful of the people who are here um uh space wise i'm currently in my room um and recognizing that as soon as this is probably done time wise i will be cleaning <laughs> so that is what the time will be uh, uh given to at the end of this course for sure and i'm going to pass this off to carolyn thank you um body little stress because I've been on Zoom all day and I was like, am I really going to do this at four o'clock or am I not? So that's body wise energy because I've been on Zoom. Thank you all for sharing your energy with me and Dana for just lifting up a little bit higher being in the bathroom. That was hilarious. <laughs> um, I'm in the living room and um, it is a uh, 20 maybe three after the hour, and I'm going to pass it on to iPhone B S U T T L. I'm sorry, that's what I see. Well, I am B subtle and body is excited because I've been waiting for this. Energy is stoked to absolutely be right here in this space. The space that I'm in is in my living room. Um, and time is of the essence. I have been waiting and waiting for this. Um, yeah. Really excited. Um, don't know, I am sight impaired. So I'm gonna pass it along to the next person who is ready to go. I think that's, Gary, maybe. I think that's you. Would that be me? Yes, yep. you, Gary. Person. My name is Gary. Um, my body is stiff and tired from 
me being blessed with work. Uh, my energy is um, uh, a mixture of tired and inspired. I've been inspired by some younger musicians over the last couple of days. It's been making me feel pretty good. Um, the space, I'm in my bedroom where I do everything. I watch TV, eat, do Zoom calls, practice, everything. <laughs> Everything but smoke cigars. And um, and the time, uh, I don't know what to say about the time. I'm not really good at um, <clears throat> at managing my time right now. So I feel like I feel like my time is is very, very short and rushed. And that means we are all checked in. Thank you. And be as in B subtle, the whole thing is your name? Or would you like to be called B? My name is Bridget. B is fine. That is something I'm called often in a good way. <laughs> it's entirely what you want. I just want to make sure that I refer to you the way you want to be referred to. Bridget, right? then. Thank you. All right, Bridget. That works for me, too. Mm -hmm. Next part of this is how we give one another feedback when we get to that point. Uh, we are going to go with a very abbreviated version of a process that I learned years ago. And the most important part of that process, is when you're giving a classmate feedback, your feedback does not come from I liked or I did not like, because that doesn't give the artist you're giving feedback for anything really to work with. So your feedback needs to have words in it like, when you did such and such, I felt. Okay. Or when you did such and such, I had this reaction, was that, in, that your intention? Because after we do a feedback session, we want to be able to then discuss it, give the actor time to digest what we've said, go back, work on a piece, and come back having learned something from our feedback. Can I have some sort of thumbs up or A that that makes sense to everybody that's here? And it takes practice, so I promise that we will uh, give grace and practice that particular skill set. It took me years to learn it because we're so ingrained with I liked or I did not like. And um, it's really useful to look at artistic work from a different point of view. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Now, here's the fun part. When you signed up for this class, I'm really, really hoping because I asked Myrna to do this to give you some sort of indication that I would like something prepared that we could play with. And I was talking about really simple, like, two lines, two lines from a poem you like, two lines from a, a song you like. Doesn't matter what it's about, doesn't matter anything about it other than about two lines worth of words that we can play with. Did anybody get that note? Did anybody prepare anything? No, I didn't prepare anything, but I've been working on with my grandkids on a little snippet of a commercial type thing. So I'm going to steal what they can. All right. That's a good way to do it. How about Dana? Or oh, I'm sorry, that was Dana. See, it's hard to keep track of all these little squares. Bridget. Yes. You ready to go? Sure. You you did you want specifically uh, someone else's something or could it be my own? Uh, more important to me that you are engaged with the words. Yes. Would you like to go first? It sounds as sure. if you're ready to go. Sure, I'm ready to go. Okay. So as you're looking at this, think about an actor's responsibility. Okay. An actor is responsible for a character that everyone understands, okay, that is consistent from performance to performance, and an actor is responsible for knowing what they call their responsibilities in a script, which is kind of redundant, 
and their challenges in that script. Okay? And how an actor gets to that is the work that we would ultimately do in a class together. I can't do it all in 30 minutes. So, Bridget, just the two or three lines that you prepared, present it to me, talk to me. Okay. Times were turbulent and trouble was near, but my heavenly father said, have no fear. The things taken away were so, so dear. My sight, my foot, would my vision ever be clear? And that's it. That's No, that's great because there's enough there we can work with. It's a finished thought. It has really nice words in it. And in that particular reading of it, I felt that you understood how the words string together. Would somebody else like to offer feedback? I have something to say. I feel like um, what I noticed was um, the initial beginning really kept me engaged it, that it almost kind of sounded like it was going to get into like Shakespearean. Like I was mm -hmm. curious where it was going to go because of like the tantalizing, like the word, that word really stuck out to me and got me kind of like intrigued in the beginning to hear what else she was going to share. I have something. Um, I was moved by her tone of voice mm -hmm. um, and, and her articulation of, of, of her phrasing. And so that that I, I felt in the rhythm of it. Mm. I was just about to ask you if you could find for us what moved meant. So for you, moved moved meant that you caught the cadence of it, the rhythm of it. Okay. Yes, yes that's correct. All right. So Bridget, I want you to do it again. Okay, thinking okay. about what people have said as feedback. And I would like you to do it as if you've never seen it before. Wow, okay. Um, um, times were turbulent. Trouble was near, but my heavenly father said, have no fear. Uh, the things taken away were so, so dear. My sight, my foot, would my vision ever be clear? Or would I always, I'm sorry. I did okay. too much. <laughs> it's okay, mm -hmm. you get into it mm -hmm. and you mm -hmm. wanna go further. I mm -hmm. really liked, uh, see, I'm gonna make a mistake. I really liked that. So let me amend that. I really like the sense of questioning that came in that second reading of your poetry. Okay. Oh. I, it's hard to be the person receiving the, the feedback. You <laughs> want to jump in and wait, wait, I want to say something. The, the, the trick is to be, to be at peace and let other people share with you what they experienced in your reading. Okay. I can, um, in the second reading, um, yeah, obviously it had a different, obviously it had a different re um, a rhythm um, because of the, the, the elevation of the, of the pitch, it gave it more of a, uh, more of a, um, a lighter, a lighter approach, a, a, um, um, the, it sound, with the inquisitiveness of the ending of the phrasing, it just kind of made it made it seem um, light. I guess so. it felt light. Um, 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 yeah. So that was my that is my feedback. It's also difficult sometimes to sit and wait. Does everyone feel complete in that feedback? Yes, I like it, girl. It was it, it made me so intrigued. I was like, is she gonna keep going? 
and she until you stop. So you get a girl. <laughs> Gary, do you have anything to share? I thought that the first the the first time through was uh, very strong and trying to convey a message, um, and it made me think about it and made me want to hear it again to try to really get into the message. And and then the second time, um, I thought she did that perfectly because it wasn't like Myrna said it was lighter. <clears throat> It was lighter, didn't seem like it was as forceful trying to get a message across. It's kind of reading words. I thought that was really good. Okay, one more time into the breach you go, my dear. Uh, this time I would like you to approach it as a conversation. As if you are sitting across the table from someone that you are just sharing an experience with. Okay. Okay. Um, I mean, times were turbulent and, and trouble was near. You know, with my heavenly father, he told me, have no fear. The things taken away, they were dear. My sight, my foot, you know. I wondered, would my vision ever be clear? And I loved that. So any feedback from, from your colleagues, the rest of your classmates? Yes, that was more intimate and more heartfelt. You felt that. You uh, actually actually felt like you was in a conversation with her and listening, you know, as she goes. So, yeah, I like that one. Gary. So, Bridget's here to be a professional then, huh? She's about to get jobs after this. After this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I would say, oops, sorry. Um, I would say I really enjoyed the, the, the conversation side because it really remind, it made me feel like, um, I was curious, like who she was talking to. Like I was, it, to me, it opened up what she was saying a bit more because I was curious, like, you know, what was the scenario that she was ex experiencing and who was she sharing this intimate, you know, personal story to. Um, and so uh, that's what intrigued me, I think more because it, it opened up the possibility of the environment that she was a part of. I'd like to just kind of um, add, um, um, with it made it less poetic and more uh, more into I don't want to say authentic more into the conversation. It, you know, I, I was less I was more into the feelings of what she was saying in, and and the story than necessarily the rhyming pattern of things. So um, that was hearing all three. You know, it's, it's like wow, that's that's very interesting. So. Carolyn, I haven't heard you. Yeah, I'm trying to get out my head about how to say what I need to say or uh, I'm feeling based on the instructions that you gave. Um, I, I felt uh, a deep connection to the third time, just like instantly it just, um, it, it just, it was an embodied experience for me. Uh, I felt, I just felt deeply connected to the emotion. Um, that was being expressed. Is, okay, go ahead. I, I love it. Okay. Anybody else before we move on? It is my hope to never silence someone who has something to say, but I have a tendency to go fast. 
So if I run along and leave you behind, catch the back of me and make me stop. Okay. Who else would like to go? Thank you, Bridget. Thank you. Thank you. That was a perfect way to start. Uh, who would like to go next? Dana, Carolyn? Awesome. Um, okay. So um, take a deep breath because we've done a lot of talking. Take a deep breath. Center yourself and your body and give us your two or three lines. Okay. Um, my mom, my grandma, and I was in a crash, so I went to Morgan and Morgan to get that cash. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Then I can't get the hand over my door. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Coming with that remix of the Morgan and Morgan. Down by love, that's all. No, you go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, I want to invite you to just stay with the first two sentences. We don't need the the song, the jingle, or any of that. Just those first two sentences. Okay, and if you would just, if you could cut that, cut that down to those first two sentences and give that to us again, so that we're a little more focused in what we're working with. Okay. Okay. Um, you talking about my grandma and my mama? was in a crash. So we went to Morgan and Morgan to get that cash. That's exactly right. That's all I needed. Okay. Feedback for Dana for the one that was the really precise reading. That was uh that was like a story as well as informing someone. It was like a story. Like the beginning of a story, it could go on, and, on. Um, and it was straight to the point. And I think it had, um, I think it had a good topic that could be expound on, and uh, can be turned into an extremely long story. Um, I'd say I, I'm, I guess for me, I personally wanted to, uh, I think, um, um, the reading, I was really interested in, I think I, the note that you made Elizabeth about losing the other side of it definitely was a big help because I feel like the story part of like the, the, whoever the, per, the child was saying the information about what transpired, um, to me, I knew that there was probably more to the story. Um, um, yeah, I, I guess I'm trying to make sense, but I, I guess I'm saying it's just like, I see why you chose to pick that middle part. And so I think with Dana, um, I'd be interested to hear how the different layers go with explaining that, that story. This is Bridget. Um, it caught me immediately. For me, anything with my mama, my grandmama, that, that's something that is dear to me. So it caught my attention and I wanted to know what was going on. And then um, when I heard the end of it about get that cash, it was just even more intriguing as to you know, what was getting that cash about? What was all of that about? Um, so it, it, it caught my attention from the beginning because of the, the, the two, you know, the two ladies mentioned, and that was interesting to me. Okay, Dana, I'd like you to do it again. Okay, the, this time when you approach it, I want you to approach it as if you are that young person 
but you are telling the story on the schoolyard to your friends. Okay. Guess what, you guys? My mama and my grandma was in a crash. So we went to Morgan and Morgan and get that cash. Okay, thank you. And feedback? This is Bridget. I, I wanted to be on that schoolyard hearing that. <laughs> it it I, it engaged me. I wanted to be, um, I, I wanted to hear it exactly from Dana's mouth. I, I wouldn't have wanted to get it secondhand because just the 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 way you know she said it, it was so um uh it it was it, it again it caught me because it was something juicy so to speak yeah i found that it piqued my curiosity like i want i want it more both times actually carolyn can you chase that idea just a little bit what about it piqued your curiosity um just money like don't know where that money where you get that money <laughs> that's what it was yeah. that cash so cash is the magical word all right anybody else with feedback on the second reading um i personally felt like i could i saw dana turn to like a young child, like, which was nice because like you could see the the glee on her face that made it to where like the the expression on her face translated to what her even or maybe I don't I don't know which which one was the decision. Was it the voice first or was it her facial expression? Like you could see that she basically when you said, you know, you're in a childlike state. And then also on the schoolyard, it's like she took that breath and immediately put herself into that space. Um, and so I, I definitely felt that. And it felt exciting. Like I could I could imagine people <gasps> like, you know, I could hear the I could imagine what would come after that. So that was great, Dana. OK, and um just in the interest of time, as you can see, this particular technique means that we could uh, we could play with the same two sentences all day long and come up with a thousand different ways to do it. But I'm going to try to hold us to time, unless you really hate that idea, and then you could say, no, no, Elizabeth, I want to go longer. Um, but I would like to hear from Carolyn if you've got something prepared. Sure. Somebody almost walked off with all of my stuff. Not my poems or dance I gave up in the street, but somebody almost walked off with all my stuff. That's an, a really interesting, intriguing beginning. Feedback? I was curious about what, like, what's, first off, immediately I thought, like, for the first time, I felt, like, a sense of, like, hardness, and in a sense of, like, she was really upset about whatever somebody took, and it, it, and then I started thinking about, like, the environment that I would maybe, like, hear this at, and I thought of it being, like, somebody took my stuff, I thought of maybe, like, her being somewhere on, like, the street somewhere or saying, saying something that she was really upset about that was gone. And so um, even down to her facial expression, it was believable. And I was like, wait, did Carolyn start yet? Or was this, <laughs> is she upset? So, yeah. Yeah, I was like, I was like, girl, who took your stuff? <laughs> I was in it. I was like, man, are you just trying to hold your composure mm -hmm. while you were saying it? But um, yeah, I wanted to know who took your stuff. This is Bridget. That excited me because you jumped right in, and I didn't realize we were in until we were in until we were in 
And when you said someone took your stuff, I wanted to go with you to find, like I wanted to get up and go find the stuff. But then when you said my poems and my dance, and I was like, wait a minute, how did they do that? <laughs> so you you captured me from, you captured me before I even knew I was being captured. Mm. Um, that was freaking hot. Yeah, I loved it. Well, I can't say that. Um, it moved me. It, it it got me. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Any other feedback on that reading? Going once, going twice. Carolyn, take a deep breath for me and do it again as if it was the moment you discovered not the day afterward where you're telling the story. Somebody almost walked off with all of my stuff. Not, not, not my poems or a dance I gave up in the street, but somebody almost walked off with all of my stuff. Bravo. Feedback? That was uh, believable. Yeah, uh, yeah. That was that was dramatic. I, I thought the first time was dramatic. <laughs> I thought the first thought the first time was dramatic. You sounded sad the first time. Now you sound um, pissed off. I know, right? <laughs> like, you, like you're still holding on to the bag, looking <laughs> around, holding on to it, <laughs> like the person who just walked off, like five steps away. <clears throat> Yeah, that was good. That was a good change too. Yeah, that was good. Um, if I can, um, I felt the um, I felt the energy both times. Um, obviously the energy was 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 different. Um, uh, but both times authentic. Um, uh, I didn't say anything that um, I didn't offer any feedback the first time because I was just kind of taken aback by it. It just kind of started and it was in, in its authenticity, in its authenticity. Um, and so this second time too, it was equally as authentic, um, uh, just at a different energy level. And, 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 and so that was, that was very, very good. As, as, as Elizabeth said, bravo. Okay, just to offer a, a thought, okay, um, which I, I mentioned briefly that an actor's main responsibility is character. Um, offer Carolyn feedback from a character point of view. Can you explain that further? Did you see a particular person both times? Was it the same person? Was it a different person? Had they changed from moment to moment? Look at it from the point of view of character. Yeah, the first person was kind of um, composed. The second person kind of let her emotions out this time. I mean, she was like, she was like, um, stunned the first time. But the second time, she was like, wait a minute, this is what happened, you know? So she let her emotions out the second time. So yeah, it was, it was changed. The emotions were different. Yeah, I think for me, I would definitely say that um, the what it felt like the first time. Um, you know, I think. Well, to be honest with you, uh, Carolyn, I, 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 when I, when I hear your performance I very much so feel like a 
like a Spike Lee monologue. Like, you know how like he'll have these moments where a person is looking dead at the screen and like, you know, saying what it is they have to say with their, you know, with their, with their, their attitude and stuff. And so uh, uh, character wise, I felt like you were somebody who um, had a lot of spunk in the, um, in, in both times to me, but it was like how, um, how, um elizabeth said uh uh it was a different time of day or it was a different mode of like how you had been processing it um i don't know if i'm i'm, I'm doing it's, it's actually kind of hard i feel like to to acknowledge the character aspect of it because um i very much so saw carolyn but like I, I could put her in so many different places. But like specifically, like I said, I saw in the in the first performance, as as uh, Dana said, she was very composed, and it almost kind of was like almost sh- sh- like shivering in the process. Like you didn't want to be on the other side of who she was talking to. But that second time, because because it was so composed. But the second time I heard it, it made me think that she could allow herself to be a lot more vulnerable in the sense that maybe she was talking to a family member or something, and she was was able to open up a little bit more because of how upset she was about the realization of it. Any other thoughts? It, uh, it was. Um, um, I, I think um, it felt like once you once you asked Carolyn to do it as a person uh, that it had just happened to the character. For me, it was the same character, but I could tell that the second um, the second uh, contribution we got was it was definitely someone that it had just happened to. The first one we heard, she had had some time to sleep on it and mm. let it kind of sit with her and, and yeah, compose herself with it. Um, and so the, the second time she was just really stating the reality of the matter. Uh, the first time she was definitely, I agree with what Dana said, she was very much so in the emotion of it. And you could you could clearly hear, you know, the, the second time that it was really something that bothered her. She was astonished. She was bothered. She was PO'd. She, yeah, all of that. Those emotions were there the second time. Wonderful job. Carrie? It, it could have been... The, the, the character could have been a couple different people. It could have been a, um, <clears throat> a high schooler going into a shop trying to tell a store owner that something just happened to her on the street. Or it could have been a, a lawyer that was just getting out of a cab, you know, and the same, it could have been the same person. I can, I can visualize the character as be, I, I can visualize the characters being one of those two both times. But I just um, I felt that the uh, the uh, like 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 everyone said first the first time through was more composed and it was kind of like uh, kind of like uh, I'll I'll get them back for trying to do that to me and the second time was you know scared trying to get away from the person like I can't believe that just happened you know get them away from me yep I um. I felt the vulnerability of the second character more. It was like, um, you know, they could have taken anything else but my stuff. <laughs> you know, it's like they could have taken this or this or there were lots of things, but they took, you know, my stuff, you know. And so, um, and so I, I felt the, I felt the anger the first time. I felt the hurt the second time, you know, the vulnerability of that. Like, I can't, you know, there's just of all things to take. You know, um, so the, the second time I, I felt the I felt the vulnerability of the character. So I found it really interesting that the character tells us that there are free will offerings that could have been taken. 
dance, poetry, those things. And that the sense of violation came with the things that why why when I'm giving you a free will offering will you try to take the things that are mine? Um, and I, I I'm curious I I would love to dig into this one a little deeper, but it because <sighs> um, I've got two more things I want to do before we leave one another, and it's five o'clock. Can I go over, guys? Okay. Um, first of all. I've kind of demonstrated for you a little bit about a process, the process of presenting something and then having feedback from your classmates in a way that gives you tools that you can use the next time around. Um, I've also played a little bit with how an actor learns to be what they call directable. And that is, you know, you may have come to me with a particular understanding of how something was going to be read or how it should be presented. And the director oftentimes will give you a different way of looking at it. And it's, it, it's, a, it's an interesting skill to learn to be directable because you need to carry forth your own vulnerability and your own skills as an actor from one scenario to another while still respecting the directing. Um, and I love working with all of you guys. You are terribly directable. I love it. Um, and, and those, I can be very challenging as a director. So um, thank you for that. Um, those that got feedback, let's start there today. Um, Bridget, in mm, 10 words, what are you going to carry away from this experience to use as a tool when you further develop your skills as an actor? Uh, I'll carry the tools of knowing it can always be done differently. Carolyn, what do you think? Um, I think um, a character, creating a character that everyone understands, I think was one of the things I heard you express. So, um, yeah, I think connecting to the person that I'm trying to portray in a deep way so that that can be transferred. Yeah. And Dana, and try it, like I said, try to keep it short, 10, 15 words. I want you to focus in on what you're carrying away from today's hour. Um, just try to imagine me in someone else's shoe, different settings. Okay. And for those that didn't actually perform, how are you changed by what you saw today or what you experienced today? Uh, Myrna, start us off. I'm um, changed by... Uh, all of the, first of all, I'm, I'm thrilled by the persons who came prepared and, and their delivery. Um, had no expectations, so I'm very thrilled about that. And the change is, is, is um, how on direction you can change a scene. 
you know, you come with one and you come with one expectation and um, it can it can change and, and the whole energy of the of the scene be changed. And and so that's I, I never I never gave it a thought before like that. Pass it on to the next person. Um, Gary. Yeah, the same. I'm, I'm definitely um, going to put that in my toolbox. <laughs> yeah, be prepared to do something that I thought could never be done differently to be able to do it differently. Yeah, that's, that's going to be a new tool of mine. Thank you. Pass it. Pass. Uh, Pass it to Maya. Um, what I'm leaving with, um, or what I got from this, I think, is how much preparation uh, mentally needs to take place in the process of understanding that words are one thing, but your delivery and, as you said, the character that you're creating is the thing that resonates with people. Um, and your delivery and, and the almost kind of like the personal work of that character matters. Um, yeah, I, I guess, I guess that's what I'm, I'm, I'm leaving with is more so on that. Okay. That's actually a great note to end on. Um, thank you, all of you. Uh, like I said, this was to dipping your toe dipping the tiny tip of your toe into an experience um, that, that I was trying to give you a rounded idea of how an actor works. Um, and if we have the gift of being able to do, you know, have enough people sign up for the live class, we will do much more, I promise. Um, is there anything, I never leave a class without asking, is there anything that's burning? What do you have to know before you leave this room? Well, if we, if we don't have enough people for the uh, life class that you said, um, I was want to know, really, people should, you know how people get stuck and they really want to become an actress, but they really don't know how to go about it or what to do and how to start first, you know, stuff like that. So I've always been curious, what's the, I know the first step is take classes. I guess just prepare, um, I don't know. <laughs> that is a gigantic question. Um, you are right. The first thing I would say is take classes because the only way that you can do this truly is to learn how to use the instrument in a way that is consistent um, and respectful of the scripts that you've been given. Um, my husband and I were talking this morning about the Hollywood myth. Oh, I was serving drinks at such and such a bar and I was discovered and I'm immediately a star. Um, that's marketing. That has nothing to do with reality. Mm. Um, the other thing I would tell you is if you want to be an actor, you need a thick skin. Because there is no other profession out there where people will tell you all of your faults all the time. Okay. Burning questions. Yes. Um, I, I thought I'm, I'm really interested in, in voice acting. And so um, I, I made the comment to someone that I was participating in this and they said to me, well, that's for people who want to be uh, uh, movie and TV actors and actresses. And I thought, well, no, it still would be for someone who wants to be a voice actor. So would you agree with that? This is for, for any type of acting, right? 
This is for any type of uh, type of acting. Acting is acting is acting is acting is acting. If you don't have the tools, if you don't have the skill set behind you, it doesn't matter how lovely your voice is, because when you step into that booth, the person who is in charge of that project is going to have expectations of you. And those expectations are learned by learning to be an actor. Gary, I saw your hand up. Yeah. Um, if we didn't have time constraints, about how many more different ways could you have asked them to perform their lines? At, not, not, not a definite, but just a range. How many? 15 more, 20 more? I used to... Um, do the adjudication for the governor's awards um, for young people who were looking for scholarships um, in theater years ago when they were still doing those, they don't do them anymore. Um, and I had a fabulous partner who had worked on Broadway on a regular basis. Um, between the two of us, I think one young person ran through their four lines 22 times. Oh. To 20, 22 different ways. Of, of approaching the same four lines. Yes. Nice. Burning questions. Um. I guess my, my a quick question that I would have would be, what's what would you say the difference is as it relates to the actor's approach between film versus theater? In a nutshell, in a theater, you don't have control over your audience's viewpoint, how they are interacting with your body or your delivery or your face, okay? So you have to think about always all of those things and how they come forward in character. Mm -hmm. Film and television, the choice of viewpoint belongs to the director and the camera person. And so they are going to edit your performance based on what they want to see. Mm -hmm. So as a screen actor, you're going to be working on things like how much can I do when the camera is right here? You know, I mean, because you don't have anything else. You know, when the camera goes right up your nose, you've still got to get the character across. And, and that's the, and on camera, camera work, you don't have the, luxury of playing with the delivery of something from one take to the next because they want exactly the same each time they call action because they're working from multiple points of view and it has to look exactly the same from each camera so that's one of the challenges of screen work is can you do the same thing exactly the same every time for 14 takes I would suspect that's the same with voice um, overacting too. They want it to be consistent because they're going to be matching them from, from take to take, correct? Correct. And it's not just you. When you do vo voiceover work, you are doing your bit in a booth by yourself with a microphone. And all the other actors are doing their bit in a booth with a microphone. And then in the cutting room, they make the dialogue. Mm. Oh, they don't. You're not. You're not in the room interacting together. You're. Nope. Nope. You are completely by yourself. And in Zoom world, you're even more by yourself. Mm. You're not even in the building together. It's the one. The one of the things that Zoom gave us was an understanding that the technology means that now voiceover actors can be even more isolated than they were before. <laughs> wow. It's a very interesting way to work. <laughs> Burning mm. questions? 
I know I gave you a lot. I gave you a lot. I tried really hard to make it something that you could walk away with in a complete thing. Um, no actor stops taking classes ever. I've been doing this for, well, I got cast the first time when I was 12 um, and started taking regular classes by the time I was 15. The first casting was, what the hell just happened to me? Now what do I do? Um, started taking regular classes at 15 um, and I have not stopped, even though um, my life here in Atlanta is very different than it was in my previous hometown where I worked more often and as an actor and a stage manager than I do here and a director. So I have not stopped taking classes. Any other burning questions before we say goodbye? Burning comment maybe. Okay. You proved today the age old adage that my mother says all the time. It's not what you say, but how you say it. <laughs> true. Absolutely true. Mm -hmm. Absolutely true. Mm -hmm. yes. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Thank all you. All right. Yes. Thank you all so much for joining in to this show abilities masterclass. Uh, um, Elizabeth, we are so grateful for you and I'm super excited. Um, to be able to share even more, um, as we know, we're going to be having the six-week series um, that will be taking place starting next month. Um, and so with you all who are interested and who enjoyed this, you know, as Elizabeth said, it gets a lot deeper um, into the process and stuff. Elizabeth, is there anything you want to share about that class before we, you know, set sail and stuff? Nothing comes immediately to mind. I would love to play with all of you for six weeks. Yes, 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 yes. So we hope you all will join in. Of course, this is, again, this is uh, Show Abilities uh, Inclusive Arts Masterclass Series that takes place every last, well, really every fourth Sunday um, of the month. And so our next one uh, will be uh, um, uh, October, what is that, 20? I think we're doing it on the 26th. <laughs> you raised your hand. Go ahead. <laughs> Um, yes, I have, this is Myrna, and I just want a couple of things. Um, the acting classes are going to start um, October 10th, and so uh, registration is available on Eventbrite, um, and uh, they're affordable. We made them affordable because we want people to um, to sign up. We don't want uh, money to be an issue, um, so we made them affordable. We also will um, accept payment plans, you know, pay half and then pay the other half, you know, kind of midway. We'll work it out. We'll work with you. Um, because we really want folks there. The, the classes are, are in downtown Decatur. Um, and so um, really easy to get to. Um, and um, and the accessible. Oh, ab absolutely. It, it, it's very accessible. Uh, very accessible because it's right by the, uh, first of all, the location is right beside the, the, the downtown Decatur Martyr Station. But in addition to that, very accessible in terms of um, getting in and um, having, uh, being able to be social distanced and in all of the protective kinds of things that are COVID minded. Um, and so uh, please uh, share with your friends. Um, this is this is for all abilities. Um, and so, um, uh, and so I uh, definitely want to spread the word um, uh, to, to, to let people know that we're doing this, um, that Showability is doing this. And then lastly, as a plug for Showability, please visit our website. Please uh, like us on Facebook and on any of the social media, Twitter, Instagram, uh, so that you can kind of be on the know of what's going on with us. And um, uh, we're, we're just delighted. Thank you so very much, Elizabeth, for, um, um, for leading us and directing us today. Um, Maya C put the uh, the, the, the um, Eventbrite link for the, the um, series there as well as the our um, website. So thanks so very much everyone for joining us today and please keep spreading the word. We're going to be back next um, next month um, um, with uh, Lionel Woodyard who is one of the camp counselors at Camp Gen Ed which, which the documentary camp, uh, Crip Camp was about and he's going to be talking about um, uh, the importance of um, persons um, 
the, the inclusion um, of persons with non-disabilities in the disability um, advocacy effort. And so um, he's a great guy, just a huge kind of funny, funny guy. And so we're excited about that. But for right now, it's all about acting. And it's yeah. all about getting ready. So thank you again, Elizabeth, so very much. We appreciate you so much. And yay. Oh, um, Dana's hand is up. Did you have a quick question, Dana? Oh, yeah, I just want to tell Miss Elizabeth, thank you so much, because this was very enjoyable. And I've already signed up for the class, because I'm I want to know more. I'm very curious. So, and thank you so much. Yes, thank you all. Thank all you. All right, guys. All right, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you all so much. And we hope to see you at the um, in person. We hope to thank see you, you all there. All right. All right. See you all next month. Bye-bye.